that is those problems can be resolved though the fact that I mean the compromise should happen in that fighting body it should happen in a Congress it should happen in that body that's where the fight should take place and the compromise takes place and it should be all right in the public's face and so I like that part and you can resolve the, the fact that they don't do anything that's what the president's for so you could basically make the, the simple rule would be well if the Congress isn't going to act the president acts okay so the, the 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 fighting body will have an incentive to do something um, you know it's not going to have any incentive to sit back and do nothing well I mean if their purse strings are strapped I mean do they really have the the power to do things I mean there's lots that just doesn't get done period down there and it's because you know there's um, there's this division between the executive and the and the and the legislature in Canada it's all one package and I mean uh, when things do get done uh, they get done effectively and uh, I don't know though on another note what's what's with you guys not having a third party I mean we've got uh, first past the post up here and we still got a, a at least a contender socialist party is it something to do with just the America and the nature of America that doesn't allow you guys to at least well, have a third say, party well, how's, what is a third party a third party is a spoiler party so yeah we've had we had a third party and that's how George Bush got elected George Bush did not win the first election he lost the popular vote by two million votes he only became president because of Ralph Nader and a third party. So yeah, third parties are just spoilers. Uh, that's why you have to have an instant runoff voting system so that all those third party votes, if that candidate is not first past the post or doesn't match, doesn't come up with some, you know, it doesn't, if that candidate is not viable, that those votes go back to the where they should go. They shouldn't be a vote for what you didn't vote for. I mean, voting for Ralph Nader in our system is basically voting Republican. Uh, apropos uh, the same as Gary said, but specifically, if you, if you don't know literally, but maybe you actually do know, and it was somewhat hypothetical, but it's the proportional representation systems. I don't know. Are you in Canada? But with proportional representation systems, you get co uh, you get individual parties, and the real reason is is because though they don't have instant runoff voting, which I think would be much better, they uh, they're able to form coalitions afterwards. So all the liberal or conservative parties can join together and still get a majority and um, so that's the reason that's the kind of system you have it determines how your party structure and if you had instant runoff voting you'd have better than proportional representation even because you can basically have a very flexible kind of but party system I don't know about the you want. I don't know well you don't even have have to have a party. Well, you don't even have what to have a party. The great system. thing about instant right. runoff voting is if we don't have to have a party system at all, you know, individuals can actually win elections. You rate the uh, candidates apropos. You write one, two, three on your top three choices, and so you vote Nader Gore Bush, or maybe you're not, and there's some of them that would vote Nader Bush Gore, and whatever it would come out. If Nader didn't win on the first round, then your vote goes to the second round. Yeah, the bottom number is always taken out. You could have ten choices, and you just run it through a computer, you know, and you just eliminate the, the guy with the fewest votes. So you take all his votes and move them up to their nine choice. Then you eliminate the nine choice, and then you move all those votes back up, and you just keep going up the list, um, you know, until you've got everybody's vote is either in one guy or the other guy. You, you take all the votes and just percolate them up to two people. Well, the thing is about doing 10 is interesting because one thing is people complain it's too complicated. But really, statistically, if you do the first three, uh, which isn't very complicated, you, you do fine. Well, I'm just to saying. To have 100%. I'm just, I'm just saying, wait, you can wait, offer I just, the let choice me finish real quick, Gary. I'm just saying, you can, you can offer the choice of 10. No, but here's the thing. But I just want to say if you choose, if you have 10 candidates and you rank all 10, the system is guaranteed, you know, in the analysis of how these voting systems work, to, you know, get the candidate you wanted, as opposed to voting for Nader and getting Bush. 
Yeah, I'm just saying you could have a system where you could choose to vote for as many as you want. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you you could make it simple and just vote for one guy and just put him in the number one slot. I'm just saying I give ten choices, but I just say, well, yeah, leave it open, and do you know get as more and more detail as possible. That's all I'm saying. I I don't see anything wrong with ten. Choices. Wrong with ten choices. No. I'm confirming that, and really the system, I, we agree on the system, and the, the real system, if you look at it, as far as the detail, is you let people put as many rankings up to how many candidates there are. And if you wanted to take it a shortcut, because it does can get complicated at the lower, you don't know who they are, if you just do three, that's basically, you can't do just one, If you, well, you can, one person can do one, but if everybody just did one, that would suck, that's our current system. But... Um, you know, but if you do three, kind of make sure everybody does at least three, because you're absolutely right. Mathematically, if you rank all the candidates, it's a perfect democratic system. The, the math fits. And it's just fucking ridiculous that right now we use math, even in proportional systems, no, not to know. fit. You can statistically know. prove it doesn't fit what people want when you vote in those systems. It's math. think uh, happens, Pyro, um, what I think happens in these runoff systems is that you psychologically there are two main contenders up there and uh, everybody voting for uh, say candidate A has got this anything but candidate B mentality in mind so they rank the B right at the bottom of the list and then it tends to as these layers go go through the people who are most in the middle and most cater to both sides eventually end up winning and it's like uh, the, the people with no position whatsoever are the ones that end up benefiting from this because they're the ones catering to both sides and I don't think uh, it's necessarily the best in terms of getting what the people want no, people would still have their politics. They would not rank George Bush at all, okay? They would be voting for what they affirm. They would not be voting for what they don't affirm, okay? So there'd still be a, a harsh divide between people. Some people would have Pat Robertson and George Bush and all those assholes on their list, and I would have all the other assholes on my list. It would be completely opposite list. It would not be the same people ranked differently. No, there would be completely different people on the list. So that's not going to be a problem at all. The, the politics is still going to be very narrow. And it would make the op it would create the opportunity where Ralph Nader could practically become president because now people won't be afraid. Ralph Nader would have gotten, he could have gotten 25 million votes. All right, he didn't get those votes merely because of the fact that most people knew they couldn't vote for him. I would have voted for Ralph Nader. I would have ranked him number one on my list. I would have ranked him ahead of Gore. Sure. But I right. obviously was not going to vote for Ralph Nader because I knew that was voting for George Bush. And so a Ross Perot could win. A Ralph Nader could win with instant runoff voting where they have no chance at all without it. Yeah, if there was a genuine move to get a certain sentiment, an individual could win, and that would likely start a new party. Or the thing is, even if they only got 20, 25 percent of, of the, the numbers that the winner gets, that's that matters in politics. That 25 percent has a voice. Suddenly it's reported on. Everybody knows, hey, people really believe you should have a slimmer government, which Ross Perot, who made his billions of dollars off a of fat government, what a fucked hard that guy but or, or nader you could vote for nader and you know exactly and suddenly people might you know uh, rally around someone and if it didn't and if it didn't work no problem and if it didn't work and but got 20 uh, percent of the vote they'll listen to whatever issues that guy said were important when they know that the a 25 million person focus group said they approve yeah, it gives them also gives them power in the next election if it's going to be close because now they can extort a deal. I mean, they can force the issue. Um, you know, because they're a player. I mean, because I mean, they well, these, well, these, and there's and nothing. There's no barrier. No longer trading off this this rock solid party thing where you know there's going to be rock solid people. They'll never give up on voting for the party. And so if a, if a third party candidate can start hitting those kind of big numbers. 
then all they do is just a little tiny bit more momentum, and they're going to win. You know, no, so, so I mean, mean, like I said, it happens in, with instant runoff voting. It can happen without it. Like I said, there's no chance. Third party, party candidate has, uh, uh, you know, like uh, you know, in a realistic sense, a candidate would have to be, have, you know, totally caught being a crook and a fraud and a cheat and all kinds of shit for the, the Democrat or the Republican to ever lose to, to a, a third apropos, party. Apropos, let me say. Okay, apropos. So the thing is. You know these guys that are slick that are going to do whatever it takes to win. They, they play a role in the system with instant runoff voting all of a sudden, because because a, a nader comes along and says, "Hey, environmentalism or, or no, let's say consumer rights," and um, the, he doesn't win with it. But the guy that wants to win by getting a few more thousand votes, he's like, "Hey, I'm for those," and he writes a couple laws for those. And so even those guys are going to start doing what the candidates that actually were creative or philosophical or invented an idea said to do. And there's a chance to get better than that. There's a chance to get the guy that actually invented the idea. But even if you don't, the fact that these mimickers are out there means that they're going to try to absorb at least a, a little bit, which is better than, you know, than nothing, which is what we get now. Well, not yeah, nothing. They're, but, I mean, they're going to have to refine their politics. Their politics, they won't be able to ignore the Ralph Nader's anymore. I mean, Al Gore ignored Ralph Nader's points, and he won't be able to do that anymore with runs, instant runoff voting, okay? So it, it, that's how it changes the equation. Yeah, well, I know Ralph made a problem with that. But the um, point is, is that he had some basic reforms. Like I said, the Ross Perot was a pile of shit. But the only good about Ross Perot is he talked about motherfucking deficits, and that was the thing that people really needed to focus on. Um. Say you've got, okay, like Gary saying, 10, 10 voters, all of which are, are independent and not linked to, to big parties. You know, what if uh, a group of these gets together and decide, a group of them, say the more conservative minor ones, and say all, all but uh, nine of the, of the 10 conservative candidates, for example, say we're going to drop out and let this one guy only represent conservative interests. And then say uh, the other side, the more liberals, there's still you know, 12 candidates out there to choose from. Well, when the balloter goes to, to cast his or her ballot, they're, and say they're conservative, they're going to have one choice to, to choose from. And then that strategic uh, electioneering that went on beforehand, you know, how does that come you're into missing, play? You're missing the point of instant runoff voting. Instant runoff voting means that they will all percolate to just two candidates. So all the votes will end up in the possession of just two candidates. So you could have 500 candidates to start with, and you're just going to end up with every vote in the pocket of two. That's what it will end up doing. So, I mean, it, there's no... Um, the, the problem you're describing doesn't matter. There's no... Not even running in the first place. Pulling themselves no out of the election before the, the vote there's happens. There's no advantage to it, because I'm explaining to you there's no fucking advantage to creating one candidate, because in the end there'll only be one candidate on the right and on the left. There'll be one liberal and one conservative, okay, in the end. And one of them will have more votes than the other, okay? But there'll be no other candidates. Everybody else will be out of the race and have no votes. Okay, um, Gary, what I was trying to say, though, is that they would pull themselves, all these conservatives would pull themselves out of the whole election before the voting even started. So when they wouldn't even be on the list to choose from in the first place. How would so it that matter? After this, How would it matter? Well, they, the way runoff voting works is that if there, there's a threshold that you need to get by with uh, whichever uh, level of voting you have. So... Um, the, it, if there's only one conservative candidate and they're getting all these first place you're votes, still, you're they're still not pass getting that it. You're still not the fucking listening. All the votes end up in two candidates' possession. No votes are thrown away. Okay, 
So there is no advantage. When the number nine guy gets crossed off the list, he doesn't take his vote.